First met um, Father McManus at uh, at uh, Our Lady of Fatima. He was sent down here by the bishop to uh, start a new parish, and of course he was I think mean, I mean, he was green at that job, you know, wondering what to do, kind of meeting everybody and feeling his way around. So I don't know. We somehow or other we got he started coming over to our house. We would sit and kind of plan things, you know, around the table. What the, how to get started, what to do, and so forth. And, and uh, then one day he said, well, we should have a Mass to, you know, and get God involved in this too. We you know, need all the help we can get. So so we invited some neighbors in and, and proceeded to have a Mass in our uh, family room. And it was a lovely Mass. Introduction to a new parish. Probably six months or so before I don't know, I, uh, I don't remember. Pappy's Pizza started. Well, my parents owned Pappy's Pizza Parlor in Modesto, and so they realized the importance of having a place to meet. So that's when they offered up the pizza parlor, not really thinking anybody would take it seriously, but, but they did, and uh, that's how history was made. My brother and I were altar boys. So with Father McManus, we would do masses and we would do, uh, I remember weddings and funerals and things like that. So we were involved in that. I know my mom did, um, I think she took care of the altar linens. So I remember her ironing those and washing them and things like that. And then I know our dad was involved in uh, being an usher every now and then. So. Well, we would ride our bikes down because my dad had hired us as janitors just for the pizza parlor. And then we started having mass, we would go there early Sunday to get it set up and we would, you know, clean things up from the party the night before. Um, and I remember I had gone to Catholic school and I, we had um, set out the priest's vestments and things there. So I did that on top of a picnic table <laughs> for the priest. Um, and there was a, a bandstand, that's where mass was held and um, there were guitars on the wall behind it, so it was the beginning of the folk mass, I think. Uh, one Sunday we were told, if you have a certain color envelope, you need to start going to mass at Pappy's Pizza Parlor. So we started going to Pappy's Pizza Parlor, and it was Father McManus that would say mass. Somebody mentioned, you know, there is a uh, mass that you can go to in Modesto, uh, they did tell us that it was a pizza parlor, and so they gave us more or less the direction. So we uh, went to the place, and we just kept going around because the address was a pizza parlor. And we got excited. We thought, a whole new church, and then we go to a pizza parlor. <laughs> But Gary and I were talking about that last night. We remembered going to Mass there that everybody dressed like they were going into a church. It was it was your church clothes. And you all I don't know, I we found out it was very respectful, even though it was a pizza parlor. When we decided we wanted to come to this other side of town, we had no idea that we were gonna have to change our church. And so they told us, well, you don't belong to Lady Fatima. You're going to be going to St. Joseph. So we came looking for St. Joseph. There was no St. Joseph. There was a pizza bar that they told us that you have to go to. And so it was really exciting for the kids because they thought, oh, great. When I was telling them, oh, get ready, we're going to pizza parlor. So they would hurry up and get ready really quick. And we would go there and, well, where's the pizza parlor, you know? And I would say, well, you behave and you listen. And then afterwards, we'll get the pizza, you know? 
So that's how we started. So we, then when our church was coming uh, together, and then we started over here, and my husband, Frank, he helped out a lot, so. My mom was involved in um, the meetings and uh, the formation of St. Joseph. So when we came to Mass at the pizza parlor, um, I distinctly remember sitting on the benches. Um, you could smell the residual pizza smell, but we still all dressed up. I remember being dressed up, wearing a hat, as if I were going into a brick and mortar, regular church, and that's how we ended up with St. Joseph's. We did go door to door. Uh, we had what was a roster of people that were going to be involved uh, in St. Joseph's. And so we went and knocked on their door and said, we're building a church. What can you do to help us? Can you commit to so much a month for a, you know, a given length of time? And so that's how we got started. We were living down the road on a dairy on the corner of Floyd and Oakdale Road, which is across from Naragi Lakes, what is Naragi Lakes now. And everything was open. We still had open canals, we had open fields, we had lots of uh, dairies and yeah. orchards, and that's what we had. At that time, uh, Briggsmore was not an expressway, it was just a country right. road. If we can imagine that. So it was Oakdale Road. I think we, everybody uh, pitched in, and, and if the right things go on, there was a lot of a lot of people who would help together, and uh, it was more like a, a big family mm -hmm. deal what was going on. And I remember that the first mass was said in the church, and that was the Christmas service in 1969. And then at the end of Mass, you would put your chairs away if you were the last ones there. Uh, but it started the Catholic tradition of leaving Mass quick because you had to put your chairs away. Which so. <laughs> <laughs> so they still hold to this day. <laughs> During Carnival time, we would get a group of people together and they would build structures, frameworks. I, lucky enough, worked for a warehouse or corrugated box. I brought big sheets of cardboard, and they cut them up, nailed them onto the deals, and we made booths. We made uh, all kinds of games where they could throw things over the top, uh, and then we all sat out there in the hot sun and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, had, a, and had a great time. <laughs> When they had the festivals, we did the cakewalk by where the organ is now, where the choir loft is yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Then we we put up uh, we put the cakewalk in there. My husband Lee, he was always in charge of the beer booth, and he had a list that long of people that would sign up for the beer booth. <laughs> <laughs> we put on the spaghetti feed for the festival, and that was a big draw, and we worked hard to get that. And uh, we and uh, Anna Ferrero made the meatballs. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you a funny story about that. When I was the president of the council, Father O'Hare says to me, and I'm going to kid around about his accent because mm -hmm. I love to do it. Marilyn, you've got to get that recipe from her, you know. She's going to die one of these days. I said, Father, I can't ask her for the recipe because she's going to die. I said, that's not nice. <laughs> Oh, but we need the recipe. <laughs> so I never did ask her. <laughs> the festival was always very, very much a fun thing. Plus the dinner dances were always terrific. Really terrific. St. Joseph's always knew how to have a good time. I steward my gifts by trying to help other people in the parish. I'm part of St. Vincent de Paul. Um, I'm 
part of Knights of Columbus. Um, I help contribute best I can to uh, helping the church grow and, uh, and to keep going forward. I'm still involved in um, stewardship with St. Vincent de Paul. I do that. Uh, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, Thursdays on the food giveaway. So a couple hours a week doing that. Um, still do the chapel uh, at regular time Saturday morning doing that. Um, go to the daily mass a couple times, three times a week probably. Um, and then uh, involved somewhat with the Knights of Columbus a little bit too. Not as much as I should, but I do the fish fry quite a bit with that. Um, so try to give back. You know, we've got a lot from the church and you know, we support them uh, you know, weekly financially and stuff. But I like to have the time now. Uh, I did when I was working, so now I do have the time to volunteer for things that I, I like doing that here and there because it's a great need and, and it's a good organization that, that uh, deal with that. So uh, happy to do that. One of the things I enjoy is singing. Singing is also a prayer. So, uh, this is one way that I serve. Yeah. Father Ilo was the uh, most surprised. Oh yeah. He gave a dinner for newbies. Mm -hmm. Bob and I went to the dinner. And me. And yeah. yeah and we and he it. says, "What are you here, Gary? What are you? Here? <laughs> are, are you sponsoring somebody?" <laughs> and you look at Bob. <laughs> and I said, "No, Father. I says I'm a newbie." He goes. Yeah. Boy, you had me fooled. <laughs> so when we left, he oh. hugged Gary and he said, Welcome home, Gary. Welcome home. Oh. So that has been special, really special. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We knew so many people because you more or less grew up around here. Uh, four of my kids got married here in this church. Uh, I think that the youngest one got baptized here, the other one got baptized in another parish by that time. And uh, we always felt welcome and we always, you know a lot of people and a lot of families and, and uh, we really felt at home and I still do. The Blue Mass? Well, they, the Blue Mass started right after 9-11. Um, I think the next year they decided to have something. Um, what's his name? Jim. Think of name now. He goes to they go to Holy Family now, so he left and they needed somebody to do it. So <laughs> I got the job. So I did. I think six years or something like that. They got it started. And so it's a still a good successful event. Um, right now we're receiving um, home communion. Father Mark was here the other day. Joanne McDonald is coming on Sundays after Mass. That seems to be our biggest contribution yeah. right now. I personally believe that when you steward your gifts, uh, you get to form a fellowship with the individuals that are working on the same committee, the same job, doing whatever needs to be done and that cannot be replaced uh, easily and I think by doing that you also foster your faith um, you know, like Paul said faith hope and love and so faith is part of something that you really need to foster Sometimes it's not easy, but without it, uh, we don't have anything. Well, I would say it's important because when you think about where they came from and look what this church is now, um, it's grown from like a pizza parlor to this organization now that helps a lot of people financially, spiritually, and in so many ways that. Um, they could be part of the next 50 years. You know, where could it go from there? How many people can you help along the way? And how much do you get out of there also there? So, uh, you know, like one of the things I do also is um, Eucharistic ministry. And I think that's, to me, a very worthwhile thing. I really enjoy doing that, the relationship you have with people. Um, 
once a week bringing them Eucharist. Those are things that people maybe don't realize are out there to do, but you you really give back more than you give on something like that. So uh, for me, that's a, my advice to them is, where do you want to go in 50 years? You know, the seeds are planted, so go ahead. Yeah, this has been a great place. I've made wonderful friends here. And just, um, and, and really enjoyed it, you know. Yeah. Just really enjoyed it. I love it because we've been here for so many years. It's just part of us. And that's what I feel. It's so wonderful that this is my church and I want to be here. I think um, I've loved everything about it since the first day in of course, all of us here, we have 50 years of our own history, and so much of it has been connected. I mean, I lost my first husband while here and received such love and support from Father O'Hare and, and pe the people involved. When surprisingly I got married again, the same thing happened, the love and support that I received from people that I had met here originally. And I, here again, I, I just think that we can all be grateful for what we've, we've experienced in these 15, 50 years. Not only our relationship with God, but our relationship with each other. One of the uh, groups that has grown is the youth. Uh, we have a very strong youth group now. In fact, it, it's, uh, when you go to Mass in the afternoons, say once in a while you go to the 5 o'clock Mass and you see the young kids out there with a the guitar, with a drum, Trumpets. No, it's, it's good. And I don't want to neglect to say this. It's just very recent in my heart and my mind. My, I lost my husband just four months ago, and uh, we had the mass <clears throat> there and a reception afterward. And my daughter said she had been to another funeral mass, a Catholic mass, uh, in the Bay Area for a friend of hers. And she said it was a totally different feeling. She said, Father Mark, when he said the Mass for us, she said he welcomed, there were a lot of non-Catholic people there, and I wanted to make sure that they were included. And he made everybody feel welcome. She said it was a whole personal touch uh, to the service that we had compared to the one she went to for her friend. So that was very lovely. And that comforted us. I love St. Joseph because when you think of the progress we made from the beginning mm -hmm. until now, it's just like another right. home. You're right. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That there's something here for everyone to uh, be able to uh, grow their faith in the way that it works best for them. And we've always had the good priests. Over the years, and we've been very lucky, I think. Still lucky. Love our priests. I think it offers so many people. There are people who love the Latin. And then there's the Filipino Mass and the Indian Mass. There's so many. Everything is offered there. Uh, you just have to pick your time. And I wouldn't go to any other church that if I have the choice. I love St. Joseph because it's alive in the spirit. Um, I, I, the priests, the homilies, the people, you just feel a sense of being alive. And, uh, I treasure that. I, I love the family feeling that you get. I just feel like it's home for me. And then once you get involved in one of the ministries, you start learning people who they are in their lives and stuff. And, and for me, that's been very valuable to me. 
the, the St. Vincent de Paul and the Eucharistic ministry, the people I meet when I bring them communion, you hear about their lives and stuff. And um, to me, that's the valuable part, uh, just the relationships you build there. So I enjoy that. It's good to see friends and be able to have some time to talk to them and to feel comfortable with the church when you walk in and uh, and to see where the church has come from and having high hopes of where it will go in the future. It was a fast 50 years. Oh, it was. Yeah. A very fast 50 years. Yeah. For sure. You know, I have to, I do have to say this too. When I started with this cancer thing, I could not believe that you should see the stack. I'm not exaggerating when I put my hands like this with cards that I've gotten from people who I didn't even know knew me. I was amazed, totally amazed. And the prayers, I know that's what's gotten me this far, you know, is the prayers. So, yeah, so you're right. It's just, it's just, it's just, you feel like you have your, someone has their arms around you, you know, kind of like that. Jesus, <laughs> I